Hello and welcome to today's video. I'd like to give a huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. We will discuss more on that later, but without further ado, let's begin with the sanding and painting and what you will need. What you're gonna need is your baked sculpture with the hair on, which I have the previous videos uploaded to my channel. You are going to need some sandpaper, so I like to use a variety of different grits. Use the rougher grit and then move to a finer grit. What you're going to want is a variety of different paint brushes. The paint that I'm going to be using is called Genesis Artist Colors for a very realistic finish. In one of my other videos that I did where I was painting the sculpture, I used regular acrylic paint, which works fine too, but it does have a lot more of a plasticky look as opposed to these that have a more natural, soft, translucent finish. But if you wanted to check out everything that I used, all of it's gonna be on my Amazon shop. I also went ahead and bought this thinning medium. These are heat set colors. So heat set colors never dry until you apply heat. So the way that I apply heat is I just bake it in the oven again. Make sure you have a reliable oven and also be sure to supervise as you work with these. Now when you get ready to sand, you're going to want to make sure that you use a breathing mask, some safety goggles, and also some gloves. So as far as the sandpaper that I personally like to use, I like to start with around like a 400 to a 600. Uh, something with not too strong of a grit because I don't want to scratch the surface and make it impossible to sand down the face. So once you're finished with the more gritty sandpaper, you're going to work your way up to a very smooth 1200 to 2000 range grit sandpaper and that'll get it super smooth. Once you get it super smooth and you don't see a lot of scratches, then you're going to want to take a polishing cloth, so it can be a microfiber cloth or a piece of denim, and you're just gonna buff it until it looks very, very shiny. So here we have sanded it down. I took a little bit of a wet cloth and tried to get some of the excess sanded pieces out of his beard and hair and eyebrows. So we're gonna go ahead and set up our palette. So here I've just scooped out some of my thinning medium. I'm looking at the same reference picture that you saw before and trying to get that color. It's like a peachy color, so it's a mix of red and yellow. Here if you see, it's translucent, but here's the thinning medium, so I'm just taking a tiny bit of the thinning medium. And I'm taking just a dab of that peachy color. Just one more dab. We're going to start with the forehead area. Carrying that peachy color to this side. Something you're going to want to keep in mind with this paint is that it does not dry like regular paint, so you're going to want to work from the top down because if you work from the bottom up, then you're going to keep smearing. To really give it a natural look, I am just kind of blotching because with our skin, it usually is not perfectly smooth or an even color. So I'm just splotching some of the skin so as to give it a more realistic appearance. I'm going to take this little thin brush, very thin tip, and I am going to mix up a color that is close to his eyebrow color. So we're going to take a lot of yellow, mix it with brown. Once I have that very natural looking eyebrow color, mix it with a little bit of thinning medium. And we're going to paint those individual hairs that I had promised that we were going to do right here at the eyebrow. And we're just going to do tiny little brush strokes looking at the reference picture to see we're going to go ahead and do that for both sides. So now something we're going to do here with the eyebrows, I'm going to do a little bit of corrective coloring. So when I had paint um, put in his eyebrows, it was a little too ginger than what his natural hair color is. So, so I'm just going to lightly apply some purple in the hopes that it'll cancel out some of this orange. I'm just adding color to the face as before and using a lot of pink on the lips. 
So here what I'm doing is I'm just looking at the reference picture and taking note that the beard hairs are a lot darker. So I'm just going in with a dark brown that I mixed up. So here I just whipped up a light blondish color. I was going ahead and adding that ash blonde to his beard. And just as you color corrected the beard with the purpley toned blonde color, you're just going to want to lightly apply this color to all of the hair, not too thick of a layer, just a very thin translucent layer of that purpley blonde. So once you have all of the paint on, we're going to go ahead and stick him in the oven. So I'm going to transfer this to my ceramic plate. We are going to bake him at 250 degrees for about 15 minutes. So here he is after I've taken him out of the oven. And interestingly, when he comes out of the oven, the colors shift a little bit. They get a little lighter. So I feel like I lost a lot of the pinkness in his lips, which is completely fine. Um, I'm gonna try and decide. Yeah, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and add some more color back in and then rebake it. So you can technically layer the colors and bake as many times as you like. So that's something that's really awesome about this paint as well. So I'm going to go ahead and add in some more pinkiness that is missing from up here and also uh, lighten the cheeks a little bit with some titanium white and add some more pink back into the lips. So here he is finally out of the oven. So I'm going to go ahead and do one more layer and hopefully third layer is a charm. This time I'm going to go a little deeper with red. I had made the nose a little bit too dark or it baked a little bit too dark so I'm just going over with a very light layer of white to titanium white to lighten it up. And a little bit of pink on the very end of the nose. Here just looks bruised and it doesn't quite look right so I'm gonna do some color correcting I'm gonna mix that red yellow and white to make it like a light peach and I'm just gonna go over that part with some of that and adjust as I go so the more that I keep adding the more it gets uglier and uglier so so as a tip if you get to a point and it's just not working out or you're losing the translucency of the skin and you want to kind of start over. You can take uh, acetone and you can use the acetone to get rid of the paint. Even the baked on paint you can technically remove. Okay, so you're going to just take that. Take it out. A little bit of splotchiness is fine, but once you get a little too splotchy, it can begin to look dirty or bruised and if necessary use your fingers to kind of spread it around and we're going to mix up again some of that ash toned blonde using yellow and a touch of purple and some white we're just going to add some highlights here continue painting that highlight and blend it now i'm just adding little tiny beauty marks on the face looking closely at the reference picture to make sure I'm putting him in the right spot so as I look at the beard the beard still looks a little too gingery so I'm just making a dark purpley brown not too much purple so here what I'm doing I am just darkening the beard just a bit more and I am trying to cancel out as much of that red as I can and if we make it a little too dark, I was going to go on top with some more of that ash light blonde. So that concludes the painting portion of creating PewDiePie. I hope that this was informative. And if you do want to know exactly what I use, I have that in the description. Also, feel free to ask me any questions at all. And also, if you have any tips for painting the face. So besides that, I wanted to give a huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace gives people a powerful and beautiful online platform from which to create your website and has a lot of wonderful features such as beautiful award-winning designer templates. 
I've been using Squarespace for many years now and I love how my website looks. I think it allows me to display pictures exactly how I want to on my website. It's an all-in-one platform, which is wonderful because you don't have to install, patch, or upgrade anything ever. Go to squarespace.com slash shoemakerart to get a free trial and 10% off of your first purchase. Other than that, I hope that you guys had a wonderful time watching this video, and I will see you guys on the next one.